and we can't get enough air and we can't think and everything is spinning. If you feel like you need to just kind of briefly walk around your house, don't go outside and wander off nowhere. Just walk around the house and just breathe deeply and catch your breath, catch your thoughts, focus, just breathe that garbage out, breathe that shit out. And remember that you are safe. You're not going to be abused anymore. You're not going to be molested anymore. You're not going to be beat up anymore if you say no. Because if you're not a little girl that's under the care of your mother or anybody else that she would leave you with, you are safe now. But many times we don't remember we're safe because our mind doesn't know the difference between the past, the present, and the future. When you think of something that was very painful and destructive in your subconscious mind, Your mind is reliving it, and you're feeling it as that little girl that was raped or that was molested or that was abused or left somewhere. So your body, since it's held in your cells, it's held in your body memory, it's held in your limbs, it's held in your vagina, it's held in your breasts, it's held in your arms, it's held in your feet, you can start reliving something in your mind, and your body will produce the same chemical reaction, and you might start shaking as if you're cold, and it's not cold because of the fear the little girl feels. You might get hot. You might get cold. You might start sweating. You start panting. Your heart starts beating like she's about to hit you in the head again because that's what the little girl remembers, and she has not processed it, and she's still stuck in that time warp. Many of us are grown bodies, but we're still stuck in very painful time warps, and we don't know how to get out, and we're trapped in compartments in the subconscious mind for that little girl being traumatized and full of fear. And we're fragmented mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We have to look at the issue of self-hatred and low self-esteem, especially how we got the low self-esteem and where it started. Because a lot of times we will have low self-esteem that is not ours, it's not real, and it has nothing to do with us. But because, like I said earlier about the childhood experiences and how we were disrespected and abandoned and abused, we're taught that we're only valuable. Many little girls become sex addicts, and they only have self-esteem tied to their vagina, their butt, and their breasts, and the way men respond to them is because they were only paid attention to by their daddy, their stepdaddy, their uncle, their cousin, their brother, stepbrother, another male, or even a female molest little kids. They only view them and they have their total focus and they get money and prizes and gifts whenever that adult has that little girl performing a sex act. Whenever he has her to hold her mouth for him to use it as an ejaculation receptacle or her vagina or her rectum as an ejaculation receptacle, pleasuring his penis. And he teaches her how to be a good lover as a little girl. He teaches her how to take this through the pain. She learns how to zone out. She teaches her own self how to take it and how to black out so she doesn't experience. She has an out-of-body experience while she's being molested, while she's being raped. And she's taught that she's a good girl and she's special when he's stroking her hair, when he's stroking her body, and when he's penetrating her and ejaculating on her. Other than that, she's ignored. She's taught you, don't you say anything to anybody. Don't you repeat this. You better not tell your mother, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill the whole family. You better not tell your teacher or your friends or the church. So she is ignored, and she's not valuable. He has nothing to do with her. She's she's not an important figure because he doesn't want to look like he's attached to her because then people might figure out he's screwing her. So she's only a star in her mind when he's having sex with her. So many of us will grow up, and we have no self-esteem if a man does not want to have sex with us. If a man doesn't tell us we're pretty and fine, he doesn't want to touch our body, he's not telling us how good we look, and we're having that skin hunger, and we want to be penetrated, we have the hunger to have a penis inside of us because we feel so empty on every level of ourselves because the soil has not been cultivated and watered on her mind, her spirit, her intellect, her school, and dealing with who she really is. The only thing that has been cultivated is her sexual energy. Her sexual energy has been twisted, warped, and manipulated as a little girl. So subconsciously, she has been taught as a little girl, and she has accepted this program to believe that I am only special as a sex object, so I'm going to be the best sex object I can be. I'm going to perform the best sex object. Acts I can, or I'm going to be a master porn star on film or in private because this 
is how I get men to pay attention to me and accept me and love me. This is how I get my self-esteem. I didn't get it any other way. I was ignored. But And then women start to confuse that with love. They think the molester loves them or they fall in love with the molester. Or they think sex is love, and they feel like if I give this man sex, it'll make him love me, need me, want me. And when the man ignores him or doesn't want it or he cheats, then her self-esteem has been destroyed. See, we have to look at those connections because many women are not conscious of where they got the sex addiction or the self-esteem tied to sexual relationships with a man as a grown woman because many times we're not operating from a grown woman's place when we're having sex in a grown woman's body. It's tied to some type of neglect, abandonment, and abuse if that's the only time that she feels good about herself. I'm going to take a break now. We'll come right back. In a moment, I'm going to give you time to think about that. Or, or let me let me check the phone lines before I go. Hey, 323, are you just listening? Do you have a question or a comment? I'm listening, but when you come back, I will have a comment because you got my brain working. Go ahead. I'll stay here now. I didn't think anybody was in here because I see nobody in chat today, which I think is extremely odd. So since I see somebody on the phone, I'll talk to you. Well, Miss Thang, you've got me thinking about, um, I, I again, I think I'm, I'm you know, I got it together, and I and I do in a lot of ways. Yeah. But I, I think about the fact that um, as much as I love my mother, I have moved back here to Atlanta to be closer to my mother because I have not lived, not since I was 19 years old, have I even lived in the same city with her. Because I vowed when when I knew my mother chose a man and his feelings over mine, I was done, and that was at... 15 years old, wow. when 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 her boyfriend reached across the table to try and smack me, he missed. But when she, but after that episode, and I go up to my room upset and crying, and she comes to my room and tells me, "You just got to bear with this just a little longer." Mm. I was done. I knew in that moment. All right, that woman gave birth to me, but I'm out. I was 15. And I vowed the day I graduated high school and was able to leave, I left, and I did. I left home when I was 17, two weeks after my 17th birthday. Uh, two weeks after I graduated high school. I wasn't even 17 yet. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I love my mother. She's a wonderful, beautiful human being, and I'm so much like my mother. Yeah. I, I so appreciate the gifts that she has given me. But at the same time, you know, when I say... Um, Oh man, I I don't have money for whatever. When she tells me, well, what happened to that man you had? Hmm. That's 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 not how I, I <laughs> that's not how I want to live my life. That's that's not how I, I don't want to. And she's not a gold digger by any means. But when you're raised with the thought of with being told that if you need it, go ask him for it. Yeah. That 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 can do some damage. That can really do some damage to you, and it's something difficult to break out of. Because I've got, I, I grew up. There were four daughters, you know, and my mother. And having the woman that raised me was my sister more more so than my mother, because my mother worked two jobs and had six kids. Wow. And my older sister told me point blank. The first lesson I learned about men was from her saying to me. When a man cannot express himself to you, he will give you money. Mm. And it, that that actually, to me, I've I've learned that to be very true. Yeah. But that that is very true. But you know, some lessons you don't need to learn when you're ten years old and eleven. Years okay. Old, you know, and that that has stuck with me, and and to this day, when I moved here from L.A., my my mother said, I said, um. I'm really nervous. I've only been here a week, but I got to get a job. And she goes, "Well, what happened to she? She named one of my ex-boyfriends because he made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a man that was making three hundred thousand dollars a year. And every chance she gets, she'll ask about him. That's the one I should be talking to because that's the one with the money." I know you have things my mother would say too. It's like, don't you know? Make sure you have men to take care of you and do all these things for you. And it discounts us. It discounts who we are. 
it discounts us. I'm, I'm doing my own business now, and